Good morning, Airborne. This message is coming to you from Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Let me tell you why. A couple of days ago, we recorded this message uh, with my media guys and the video file ended up being corrupt. I was already down here in Houston and uh, so the media guys here were generous enough to say, why don't we do it in one of our studios? And uh, so that's what we're doing. They rescued this message. Well, last week we started a series on discovering the kingdom of God. We're going to go into part two of that today. This is really, really important for you to have a revelation of the kingdom of God. And the reason why is because your destiny and your purpose is tied to the kingdom of God. Now, we all know that we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And this is where our purpose originates from. Let's read it, Philippians 3 and verse 20. We are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. Now the kingdom of heaven is going to one day physically descend down upon the earth. In Revelation 21, we read about it where, it's, where John said, and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, here it is, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. Verse three, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He's trying to make this point. I want you to get that in concrete because this is God's purpose. He loves us. It's always been his desire to be with us. And one day he will be, and he will be with us forever. Verse four, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and they will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Wow. Now this is something that the church has to look forward to. What an incredible day it will be for us that believe. And what an incredible time it's gonna be for the whole earth, for the kingdom of heaven to come down and set its axes upon the earth. But even though this great event will be sometime in the future, we don't have to live in defeat now. As if we might think, well, that's such a long time, uh, you know, before the Lord comes back and, you know, we're going to have trouble, we're going to have difficulty. Yes, in this world, we'll have trouble, but we are not to live in defeat. How do we live in victory? How do we live in the peace that God gives us? It's by knowing that we can live in a kingdom now mentality. Listen to how Jesus taught us to pray now, here on the earth, right now. Verse number nine of Matthew chapter six. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Here it is, on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, now the kingdom has not come yet. One day it is going to come. But he says right now that we as believers, we can pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, there is no, uh, there is no one that is sick in heaven. There's no one that has fear in heaven. Fear does not exist in heaven. This is why we can pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you need healing today, 
Why don't you pray for heaven to fall down on you? Because when heaven, when the kingdom comes down into your heart, as Jesus taught us to pray, that is how we receive healing. That's how we receive peace. That's how we have such a great sense of hope for tomorrow that one day Jesus is going to come. And until he comes, we can live in a kingdom now mentality. What Jesus is saying to all believers is you've got to live in a revelation of the kingdom. And that's why we've started these series of messages is so that we can understand more about what is happening in the kingdom right now so that we can pray his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I hope you're getting that. Currently, hey, there's a lot going on in the earth. And the enemy would like you to think that this is permanent. Uh, everything that is happening around us, well, this is just the way it's always going to be. Well, you've heard from the enemy. You've heard from sources here on the earth. You've watched the news. You see the heated election that's going on. Hey, there's all kinds of stuff happening in the earth. But we as believers, we as citizens of heaven, we do not get our report from this earth. We get it from the kingdom. You are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. So today you should be asking the Lord, what is it that you have on the agenda for me? I'm going to tell you, when you start asking the Lord that every day, you'll live in more peace. You'll live with a greater sense of hope and destiny and purpose while you are on the earth. This is the report of heaven is that he wants his will to be carried out through his people. Listen to this point. God's purpose with earth was to extend and establish his kingdom on the earth. This was his original intent, always has been, always will be until it happens, was for earth to be the extension and the establishment of the kingdom of heaven. From the beginning of creation, his master plan was this, replicating the atmosphere of the kingdom of heaven on the earth, listen to this, and populating the earth with his image through mankind. Here's the plan. You're going to see this differently. I know you've read it many times. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. There's the purpose. Let them have dominion. The Greek word for dominion is rada. This means the rulership or dominion of a kingdom the rulership or dominion of a kingdom. He wants us to think in a kingdom mind, a kingdom mindset. This is his purpose, his eternal purpose for us is that we be kingdom minded, citizens of heaven. Now, what does kingdom mean? It's the governing influence of a king over a territory through the establishment of a citizenry of people who reflect the king's image, culture, nature, knowledge, and power. That's what a kingdom is. And so when we look at our purpose, there it is. It's reflecting the king's image, his culture, his nature, his knowledge, and his power. Let that sink in because every message we're going to talk about from here through the rest of this series is going to be based upon that. The kingdom of heaven is one day coming down to earth, but we don't have to wait to experience his power. The authority that he has given us for to live in a kingdom now mindset. The kingdom is eternal, but the kingdom of God and its government was not made for heaven. It was made for earth. Yes, earth. When his kingdom comes, we will see the end of heated campaigns, 
presidential elections, government as we know it will be a thing of the past. Can I get a big amen right there? And the reason why we can have a big amen right there is because Jesus government is going to take over and replace all other governments. When Jesus establishes his kingdom on earth, the Bible tells us that wars will cease and Jesus promised government of peace and goodwill toward men will begin. Now we read this scripture every single Christmas and uh, we sometimes can see it as a cute story, but I'm gonna tell you, it's much more than cute. It's prophetic and it has eternal authority in it. Isaiah 9 verses six and seven. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. Can I say that again? His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all of eternity, the passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. His desire for you is to discover your purpose by learning more of what the kingdom of God is. It's gonna be far beyond anything that we could ever imagine or think. In 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, it says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. Take your best shot at that thinking about that peace, thinking about the kingdom that He is going to set up. Everything is going to be fair. Everything is going to be uh, done with justice, his justice. Let me tell you, that goes far beyond anything that we have ever experienced. You see, you discover your true destiny by accepting who you really are. And as I finish today, let me tell you that you are a child of the king. You were made in his image. This has always been your destiny, always been your purpose in life. If you've been trying to find it, why don't you become a child of the King today? You already are one. Maybe, maybe when you hear me say that, you, 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 there's something that just bears witness in your heart that, hey, there's something to this. Well, that's the Spirit of God from the kingdom of heaven speaking to you, connecting with you, and connecting you back to your eternal purpose, and that is to be a child of the King. How do you do that? By simply saying yes and acknowledging that He is a King that loves you with an everlasting love. And if you pray that prayer, if you pray and you say, God, I love you, I accept you into my life, or you just say yes to Jesus, let me tell you, you just start looking toward the kingdom. This is the most simplest thing that you can do and the most powerful thing that you could ever do is saying yes to the king that loves you. Mm -hmm.